This is a Fox News special report. Special coverage of Robert Mueller, the special counsel, his findings being released by the Attorney General, William Barr, to Congress. We're expecting at least a few pages of those top-line findings. I'm Ed Henry in New York with Dana Perino. And, uh, and I'm going to pause you there because Jake Gibson, who's our producer mm -hmm. at the Justice Department, I believe we have him on the phone. And, Jake, are you there? I am here. So the, the report, the, excuse me, the letter just came out, the, the um, Barr letter to Congress. It is four pages. I'm going to read it to you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So, dear Chairman Graham, Nadler, Ranking Member Feinstein, and Ranking Member Collins, as a supplement to the notification provided on Friday, March 22nd, I am writing to you today to advise you of the principal conclusions reached by Special Counsel Robert Mueller and to inform you about the status of my initial review of the report he has prepared. The next section is titled, The Special Counsel's Report. On Friday, the Special Counsel submitted to me a, quote, confidential report explaining the prosecution or declination decisions he has reached. He has reached. This report is entitled, report on the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, unquote. Although my review is, review is ongoing, I believe that it is in the public interest to describe the report and to summarize the principal conclusions reached by special counsel and the results of his investigation. The report explains that the special counsel and his staff thoroughly investigated allegations that members of the presidential campaign of Donald J. Trump and others associated with it conspired with the Russian government in its efforts to interfere with in the 2016 U.S. presidential election or sought to obstruct the federal uh, investigations. In the report, the special counsel noted that in completing his investigation, he employed 19 lawyers who were assisted by a team of approximately 40 FBI agents, intelligence analysts, forensic accountants, and other professional staff. The special counsel issued more than 2,800 subpoenas, executed nearly 500 search warrants, obtained more than 230 orders for communication records, issued almost 50 orders authorizing use of 10 registers, which is uh, tapping someone's phone, getting their phone numbers, made 13 requests to foreign governments for evidence and interviewed approximately 500 witnesses. The special counsels obtained a number of indictments and convictions of individuals and entities in connection with his investigation, all of which have been publicly disclosed. During the course of the investigation, special counsel also referred several matters to other offices for further action. The report does not recommend any further indictments, nor did the special counsel obtain any sealed indictments that have yet to be made public. That is key. Below, I summarize the principal conclusions set out in the special counsel's report. The next section is titled Russian Interference in the 2016 Presidential Election. The special counsel's report is divided into two parts. The first describes the results of the special counsel's investigation into Russia's interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The report outlines the Russian effort to influence the election and documentation crimes committed by persons associated with the Russian government in connection with those efforts. The report further explains that a primary consideration for the special counsel's investigation was whether any Americans, including individuals associated with the Trump campaign, join the Russian conspiracies to influence the election, which would be a federal crime. The special counsel's investigation did not find that Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated wow. with Russia in its efforts to influence the 2016 presidential election. I'm going to read that part again. Yeah. The special counsel's investigation did not find that the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with Russia in its efforts to influence the 2016 mm -hmm. U.S. presidential election. Mm -hmm. As the report states, the investigation did not, quote, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. That is a quote from the, the Mueller report. The investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. This goes on. The special counsel's investigation determined that there were two main Russian efforts to influence the 2016 election. The first involved attempts by Russian, a Russian organization, the Internet Research Agency, to conduct disinformation and social media operations in the United States to sow social discord, eventually with the aim of interfering with the election. As noted above, the special counsel did not find any U.S. person or Trump campaign, campaign official or associate conspired or knowingly coordinated with the IRA in its efforts. Although the special counsel brought criminal charges against a number of Russian nationals and entities in connection with these activities. 
The second element involved in the Russian government's effort to conduct computer hacking operations designed to gather and disseminate information to influence the election. The special counsel found that the Russian government actors successfully hacked into computers and obtained emails from persons affiliated with the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party organizations and publicly disseminated those emails through various intermediaries, including WikiLeaks. Based on these activities, the special counsel brought, a cr brought criminal charges against a number of Russian, Russian military officers for conspiring to hack into computers in the United States for purposes of influencing the election. But as noted above, the special counsel did not find that the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in these efforts, despite multiple offers from Russian-affiliated mm -hmm. individuals yeah. to assist the campaign. So again, saying that the campaign did, did not conspire with Russians. The special counsel did not find the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with Russian government officials in these efforts, and this is key, despite multiple offers from Russian-affiliated individuals to assist the Trump campaign. Now we're going on to page three. This is obstruction of justice is in the next section. The report's second part addresses a number of actions by the president, most of which have been subject of public reporting that the special counsel investigated as potentially raising obstruction of justice concerns. After making, quote, a thorough factual investigation, unquote, into these matters, the special counsel considered whether to evaluate the conduct under department standards governing prosecution and declination decisions, but ultimately determined not to make a traditional <clears throat> prosecutorial judgment. The special counsel, therefore, did not draw a conclusion one way or, other, or the other as to whether the examined conduct constituted obstruction. So let me repeat that. The special counsel, therefore, did not draw a conclusion one way or the other as to whether the, special, the examined conduct con constituted obstruction. Instead, for each of the relevant actions investigated, the report sets out evidence on both sides of the question and leaves unresolved what the special counsel views as, quote, difficult issues, unquote, of law and fact concerning whether the president's actions and intent could be viewed as instruction. The special counsel states that, quote, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a, a, a crime, comma, it, does, it also does not exonerate him, uh, unquote. Let me repeat that. The special counsel states that, quote, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it does not, it does not exonerate him. This goes on. The special counsel's decision to describe the facts of his obstruction investigation without reaching any legal conclusions leaves it to the attorney general to determine, to determine whether the conduct described in, this, in the report constituted a crime. So on the obstruction of justice question, it is being left to the attorney general to determine whether the conduct described in the report constitutes a crime. Over the course of the investigation, the special counsel's office engaged in discussions with certain department officials regarding many of the legal and factual matters at issue in the special counsel's obstruction investigation. After reviewing the special counsel's final report on these issues, consulting with department officials, including the Office of Legal Counsel, and applying the principles of federal prosecution that guide our, ch our charging decisions, the deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, and I have concluded that, that the evidence developed during the special counsel's investigation is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Our determination was made without regard to and not based on the constitutional considerations that surround the indictment uh, and criminal prosecution of a sitting president. So the next part here seems to be that that the attorney general and the deputy attorney general have concluded that the evidence developed during the special counsel's investigation is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Our determination was made without regard to and is not based on the constitutional considerations that surround the indictment and criminal prosecution of a sitting president. In making this de determination, we noted that the special co counsel recognized that, quote, the evidence does not establish that the president was involved in an underlying crime related to Russian elect election interference, unquote, and that, while not determinative, the absence of such evidence bears upon the president's intent with respect to obstruction. Generally speaking, to obtain and sustain an obstruction conviction, the government would need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a person acting with corrupt intent engaged in obstructive conduct with a sufficient nexus to a pending or contemplated proceeding. In cataloging, in cataloging the president's actions, many of which took place in public view, the report identifies no actions that, in our judgment, constitute obstructive conduct. Let me repeat that. In cataloging the president's actions, many of which took place in public view, the report identifies no actions, in our judgment, that constitute obstructive conduct. 
and had a nexus to a pending or contemplated proceeding and were done with corrupt intent, each of which, under the department's principles of federal prosecution, guiding charging decisions would need to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt to establish an obstruction of justice offense. Okay, we're at the last part here, so bear with me. Status of the department's review. In relevant regulations... The relevant regulations contemplate that the special counsel's report will be a confidential report to the attorney general. As I've previously stated, however, I am mindful of the public's interest in this matter. For that reason, my goal and intent is to release as much of the special counsel's report as I can, consistent with applicable law, regulations, department policies. Based on my discussions with the special counsel and initial review, it is apparent that the report contains material that is or could be subject to the federal rule of criminal procedure, which imposes restrictions on the use and disclosure of information relating to matters occurring before a grand jury. Generally, that limits the disclosure of, uh, disclosure of certain grand jury information in a criminal investigation or prosecution. Um, this restriction provi- protects the integrity of grand jury proceedings and ensures that the unique and invaluable investigative powers of a grand jury are used strictly for their intent. Um, given those restrictions, given these restrictions, the schedule for processing the report depends in part on how quickly the, gov- the department can identify the material that, that by law cannot be made public. I have requested the assistance of the special counsel in identifying all the information contained in the report as quickly as possible. Separately, I must also identify any information that could impact other ongoing matters, including those that the special counsel has referred to other offices. As soon as that process is complete, I will be in a position to move forward expeditiously in determining what can be released in light of applicable law, regulations, etc. The very end here is, he says, as I observed in my initial notification, the special counsel regulations provide that, quote, the attorney general may determine that the public release of, unquote, notifications to your respective committees, quote, would be in the public interest. I have so determined, and I will disclose this letter to the public after delivering it to you. That is the letter in its entirety. If you have some quick questions, I'm happy to answer. Otherwise, I'm going to run out and give this to Molly Henneberg, and we can get more on the okay, air. Okay, Jake Gibson, we want to commend you. An outstanding job getting us the news so quickly.